Mike Griffith here of SECCountry.com. It's day three of the SEC Spring Meetings here in Destin, Florida. I'm at the Hilton Sand Destin, and today the presidents and the chancellors arrive, and of course, SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey will meet with them as the SEC continues to try and get on the same page here as they do every year at this vacation spot. Obviously, the hurricane, or excuse me, the tropical storm. I say hurricane because it was in the back of all of our minds, but it's obviously clearly gone. The weather outside is beautiful, and now the chancellors and the presidents are here to follow up and hear what their coaches had to say and each push their agenda. Commissioner Greg Sankey last night talking with the media, it's pretty clear that this new legislation involving gambling is at the forefront of Sankey's mind. He talked about the concerns with college athletes and gambling, the touch points, if you will. And he's referring to the managers as well as the trainers and the college students go on campus. That's a little different than the NFL. They're not impacted by as many people and thus, you know, th this is a bigger issue for the SEC. And talking with Scott Strickland, the Florida Athletic Director, yesterday, he expects Florida to beef up their compliance. This is going to be a cost issue because they're going to have to hire more people. So that gambling issue from state to state, we know the states are going to be allowed to have their own laws. Uh, but each institution has been told, you know, to put this at the forefront. This is something that the SEC is going to take quite seriously and try to be very proactive on in terms of educating their student athletes, their coaching staffs, and yes, their compliance staffs as well. Uh, Greg Sankey yesterday also talked about the headset issue. You might remember earlier this week, Nick Saban made light of it and said he, he compared it to uh, a mouse droppings issue as opposed to elephant doo-doo. That was Saban's way of saying, why in the world are you even worried about this when there's other issues going on with college football? I got the feeling that Greg Sankey kind of agreed with that, that this wasn't necessarily a forefront issue as far as the SEC was concerned. Some people think that this is more legislation that's aimed directly at Nick Saban. You know, Saban's done a great job in Alabama in terms of innovating and making the best use of his resources and getting a lot of uh, assistant coaches or specialists, or now he calls them interns, to come in there and help his staff, putting them on headsets. He says it's a developmental way for you know, young people to learn how to coach, former players to get involved. But other people probably see that as Alabama having more eyes and ears on the game and more communication. And, and so this is an attempt to maybe slow down that Alabama train. And earlier today, I compared Nick Saban to a really good NASCAR crew chief. He keeps innovating. they got to keep making the rule book bigger and bigger. The things that he's doing aren't necessarily illegal, but they're innovative. And then the NCAA has to step back and say, well, do we allow everyone to do this or do we provide legislation against it? And in the case of these headsets now limiting every staff to 20, this is the NCAA you know, kind of peeling it back, trying to keep the, the playing field level. Maybe there's some schools that don't have that many people that could be on the headsets or don't want to put that in the budget. So to me, I look at this as the NCAA's way to try and keep the playing field level. And yes, probably slow down Nick Saban, more innovation from Saban. Uh, I guess he could take it as a compliment, but he did when he was here earlier, and it was pretty clear. Uh, Gus Malzahn also not in favor of this headset rule, and Commissioner Greg Sankey saying, yeah, this isn't something that you know the SEC really cared a whole lot about. You know, the big issue from here has been on the graduate transfers. Should these graduate transfers be allowed to go from one school to the next without sitting out a year? Nick Saban made his thoughts known on that as well. You know, you wonder, well, gosh, you keep leading with Nick Saban. Well, Nick Saban's at the top of the conference, and what Nick Saban says matters. And most often, what Nick Saban says is what's won over in public sentiment. This is one rare occurrence where what Nick Saban said didn't go over with the rest of the league. Nick Saban is against graduate transfer players being able to graduate and then play right away in conference. And he was very vocal about that. Saban, maybe with a little bit of hyperbole, compared that to free agency. Well, obviously, if it was just anybody on the team that was transferring could play right away, you could make that case. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about players who have their degree, have already graduated, are in good standing, and wanting to play right away. Now, Nick Saban pointed out at the end of his production the other day that Alabama could benefit from this. Maybe there's a player at Kentucky or Mississippi State or Vanderbilt that wants to win a national championship. They're a senior. They're playing really well. Maybe they say, hey, I want to go play for Alabama my senior year where I got a chance to play for a national title. So Nick Saban said, now, if this, if this rule goes into effect, and I think it will tomorrow, by the way, 
Uh, if this rule goes into effect, Alabama could benefit. So he's kind of throwing that out there. Now Saban is still against the rule, but he did point that out. And in Saban's defense, I think that you know you want to have depth. You need to have quality depth. We saw that last year at Alabama with all the injuries at linebacker. So right now, the player in question that's kind of at the heart of this issue is Brandon Kennedy, a backup center at Alabama, who's interested in Tennessee and Auburn. What if Alabama loses their starting center? Then suddenly he's not a backup center anymore. So I understand why Nick Saban is against this rule. Alabama's got a lot of quality depth. It's a byproduct of the great recruiting that Saban has done and the player development. So this is the issue to watch. Uh, I expect it to get voted on tomorrow. And I expect it to pass. Uh, most all the other coaches have come out and said, hey, we're for guys who have graduated being allowed to transfer and play right away. I thought a telltale sign of which way this was leaning was that Greg Sankey yesterday chose to uh, speak about how he himself had transferred twice. So the fact that the commissioner chose to put that out there, uh, while this is such a big issue, is probably a good indicator that he sees the value or he understands the plight uh, of a lot of these players. Now I think this rule will come with stipulations. I, I think that players who haven't graduated yet would still need to sit out a year. I know that Greg Sankey has um, you know, exhausted all means to get all the information he can on this. The SEC has some leadership committees as well as some student committees and Sankey telling us yesterday that those student committees are pretty much split on the issue of whether or not players should be able to play right away or whether they should have to sit out a year. So tomorrow though, I think the SEC will move forward with a rule, ruling after a vote that players can play right away if they have graduated and they're in good standing even in the SEC. Uh, I know that when I talked with Florida Athletic Director Scott Strickland, he's in favor of it. So is Auburn basketball coach Bruce Pearl. So two more guys there that are in favor of it. Philip Fulmer also in favor of it at Tennessee, backing up his head coach Jeremy Pruitt, himself a transfer from Middle Tennessee to Alabama. You know, some of the lighter moments that occur here are fun. I had a chance to catch up with Jimbo Fisher yesterday, now the coach at Texas A&M. Earlier in the week, I'd spoken with Terry Bowden before I came down here. Terry now at Akron, of course, and I was doing some things with ESPN Films on, you know, greatest memories. And you know, my first year in the SEC covering college football was covering the 1993 Auburn team that went 11 and 0. A lot of history with that team. Terry was the coach. Jimbo Fisher was the quarterbacks coach. Uh, I also talked to Will Muschamp down here. Will Muschamp played for Georgia. Actually played against that 1993 Auburn team and remembered it well. Uh, but catching up with Jimbo and talking a little Auburn 1993, uh, I mentioned Jeremy Pruitt. Jeremy Pruitt was, uh, he had all state honors up there, but playing well, high school in uh, Rain, Rainsville, Alabama, I guess, small town I hadn't heard of, even though I lived in Alabama seven years. Um, and Jeremy had done pretty well as a quarterback. I think he, his team was like 48 and 8 while he was there. He co played for his dad. And Terry Bowden said, Yeah, I remember Jeremy Pruitt as a player. And uh, of course, Jimbo Fisher, being his offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach uh, at Sanford, Alabama, before they went to Auburn, Jimbo Fisher remembered Jeremy. Said he was too small and he didn't throw the ball real well. And uh, Jeremy said, yeah, that's right. That's about how it was. So Jeremy went on as a defensive back, and Jimbo said he was a really good player, really good athlete, but not able to play quarterback. And, of course, uh, the rest is history from there is Jimbo and Terry went from Sanford to Auburn and went undefeated in 93. And Jimbo went on to LSU, where he also had a great stint as an assistant coach. You know, he kind of reminded everybody that he spent 13 years in the SEC. I think he said 11 in the ACC. So even though Jimbo Fisher, new to the SEC as a head coach, he's been in the league before as an assistant coach at Auburn and at LSU. And that tied to Jeremy Pruitt kind of unique. And Jeremy said, I don't, you know, he, I wouldn't call it recruiting. You know, he didn't get a scholarship offer, but of course he got looked at. And that's how that relationship started. And then later, Jimbo hired Jeremy Pruitt to be his defensive coordinator when Florida State won the 2013 National Championship. Jeremy Pruitt was the D coordinator there. So a lot of intertwined activity between these coaches. They like to do a lot of storytelling. You remember day one, we asked Will Muschamp what advice he'd give Jeremy Pruitt. He said, he'll be all right. I'm not going to give him any advice. And uh, Pruitt got a kick out of that because he said, you know, I'm sitting around the table here around all these guys that are my friends and nobody's offering me any help. Right? Well, welcome to the SEC. Uh, it's just as much a shark tank as any other league in the country, certainly very competitive programs. Some other issues uh, I'll touch on for the Tennessee fans. Philip Fulmer yesterday making it clear that, you know, Neyland Stadium, a pretty grand stadium, a pretty nice setting, one of the best in the country, it's set for about a $340 million renovation as it's getting ready to celebrate its 100th birthday here in a few years. 
Well, since Fulmer's taken over as AD, he said he wants to take a look at the plans. And some people took that to mean that the plans were delayed or being put off, and that's not the case at all. Everything's still on track. Uh, it simply means they're going to have a planning meeting, and Fulmer's going to add the dimension of doing some stadium visits around the SEC, around the country, to see uh, what other plans he might want to modify or adjust and take a look at the current plans as well. Uh, let's see here. Questions? Uh, what am I going to write for after SEC Country? Uh, well, I, I don't mind addressing that at all. Uh, SEC Country and uh, Land of Ten, the Die Hards brand, uh, we're not going to publish after June 30th. The Cox Media Group has made a strategic decision to move away from the sports verticals. And listen, guys, I don't have anything bad to say about it. You know, the industry is changing, and all the media companies out there evaluating their strategies and what they're going to do with digital media moving forward. I've been treated wonderful by this company. The last two years that I've had uh, covering the Southeastern Conference, covering Tennessee, have been the best two years of my career. I've enjoyed it. Uh, the company takes great care of its employees. We had great benefits. Uh, we're all disappointed, but this is kind of how the media business is. Now you look around and it's happening all over. You saw all those really talented people from ESPN, you know, and what they went through just a couple years ago. You know, Brett McMurphy, the top of the food chain, Ted Miller, guys like that. Um, you know, a lot of my peers that I really respect. And uh, it, it happens. So hopefully, uh, I'll have another opportunity to continue to cover the SEC, whether it's Tennessee or somewhere else, and I look forward to making the most of it. But until then, I want to keep reporting on the SEC and get back to our talks here in Destin. Uh, there'll be one more day tomorrow. Again, if you missed the front of the broadcast, the presidents and the chancellors arrived today. And uh, they're going to weigh in. Obviously, Greg Sankey will talk with all of them about these issues. The issues that are important, again, this graduate transfer rule, Later, sorry for the uh, video interruption. We've got uh, some issues here every now and then. Tonight, the SEC head of officiating, Steve Shaw, is going to talk to us here at the Hilton Sandestin. I'll try and put some video up of that. And then tomorrow, I'll bring you another update of what's going on here from the SEC spring meetings in Destin. Really appreciate everybody watching. And thanks for the nice, encouraging words. Uh, everything's going to be great. Uh, when you're talking about SEC football, you can't help but smile. And, and again, we'll bring you more news at seccountry.com. And you can follow me on Twitter, at MikeGriffith32. Thanks for tuning in.